Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. My name is Maya the King, and what's the difference between ignorance and apathy? I don't know, and I don't care. Now then, today we're taking a look at a game called The Witch of Fern Island, developed by Enjoy Studio SA and published by Freedom Games. This game was released in early access and is selling for 20 American dollars. Yes, I know I've used that opening joke before, but I'm running out of funny things to say, so deal with it. There's gonna be some repeats. So, okay, basically, in a nutshell, this game is a life simulator where you play as Abril. I think that's how you pronounce it, and honestly, when I was first going into it, I wasn't too sure what I was expecting. The thing is, even though farming sim games and life simulator games are normally my thing that I get addicted to for that month, this one seemed off to me from the Steam store page, but you know, I decided to give it a try anyway, just in case. And... What can I say? It's early access. I mean, look, I'm willing to give early access games a little slack because of the state that they're in, but there's always a limit to how much I'm willing to forgive, so... With that in mind, let's dive into this and see what kind of state it's in, shall we? So as I said, you play as a witch named Abril. I, I think that's her name. Her name only comes up in conversation with other people. Anyway, she's a young witch apprentice who foolishly decides to cross the ocean on her magical broomstick. She gets into a storm, crashes on an island, and due to some kind of spell, curse thing, she's stuck there. So she ends up taking her apprentice apprenticeship here and becomes part of the residence on the island. Oh, and the world seems to know about witches and are grateful that they now have one who can brew them up some potions and magical charms and whatnot. So, that's a nice twist. I'm, I'm glad she doesn't have to hide, you know, what she is. So that's nice. So, yeah, start living, I guess. That's about it for the story. It's okay, I guess. I mean, it's not too enthralling or epic, but I mean, I guess it's serviceable. It's, I don't know, we'll go into that a little bit later. But, as always, let's first go into the good and the bad of this game before my final thoughts, shall we? So up first for the positives is the music. I mean... The music is just so nice and calm and beautiful and chippy that I just enjoyed listening to it. It reminds me of my time at Porsche Music when I first heard that one. It just sounds so peaceful and nice and it just works really well for the game. I mean, just listen to this for the next, like, five seconds. Listen to this. Isn't that so nice? Isn't that so pretty? Doesn't it seem to fit it so well? I mean, that's just good music right there. That just sets you up for what you're getting into, and it's perfect. Next up on the positives is the user interface and the gameplay. The user interface is pretty simple and standard, easy to use, easy to navigate, easy to get used to, so that's good. It's different than what I'm used to in other games, but that's not always a bad thing. As long as it's easy to understand and get used to, that's all that matters. As for the gameplay, pretty much the same, actually. It's simple to use, easy to figure out, and overall just smooth to play. As a witch and as a farming simulator game, they just put those two things together, as you'd expect. I mean, you can go out and chop wood, mine ore, hoe the fields, water the plants, craft items, upgrade and expand your house, uh, vendor stall or water well, there are relationships with the townspeople, new recipes to unlock and craft, and because you're a witch, you also get magical spells, rituals, charms, potions, and other fun stuff to really just make it feel magical, which is good. Hell, when I woke up my cauldron for the first time, the lights, colors, and magical ambiance they were giving off was incredible. More stuff like that, please. The next positive thing is the price. It's early access, and it's got no voice acting. But depending on how much content is here and how much playtime, you know, there would be, which I'm guessing right now there's probably going to be around four hours of gameplay, which alone would justify the price in my book. But then you've got the decent enough graphics, the smooth gameplay, the interesting and original concept, a massive map for you to explore and play around with, along with newer mechanics not seen in a lot of farming sims. So, you know, for all of that, I think the price is actually pretty decent. I think a $20 for this kind of game early access investment is actually very appropriate, especially considering how big this game is. So that's a good thing. And last but not least is the graphics. Now don't get me wrong, these aren't exactly the best graphics I've ever seen but they are still really nice to look at. They're still serviceable. I mean, look at my time at Porsche. They don't have the best graphics at all, but they were perfect for that game. And the same can be said here. The graphics are perfect for this game. The magical lights and auras coming off of spells and effects, the bloom effects, shading, shadows, and lighting, it's all just freaking beautiful to look at. They blend so well together. Like when I was watching some of this magic happen, I felt like I was really looking at magic, and that's just hard to do in games. That's hard to come across. So. In, in some areas, in some ways, it is, it is just magical to look at, and it just feels really good. And it's pleasant on the eyes, that's the best part. Okay, so that's all I got for the positives, now we gotta go into the negatives. And I know it's early access, but if I don't point this stuff out, then how will you know what's wrong, and it might be game-breaking for you, and how will the devs know what's wrong and need to fix? Plus, it's my right as a consumer. Plus, the early access excuse only gets you so far. Now then, on to the bad things. By the way, keep in mind that I rem I'm remembering 
that it's early access as I'm making these comments, okay? I'm aware that it's in early access and I'm still making these comments. I don't need you guys telling me in the comments below it's early access. I know. I'm still making these critiques despite that. So, the first bad thing is the sound effects. I mean, I gotta bring attention to this. Listen to this. It's pretty much like that in the whole game. In some situations, the sound effects sound on point, like with the rain, for instance. It's really good, and when you're under a roof, the rain is muffled. I mean, that's just... that's that's great. That's awesome. But then there are points like that one that I just showed you, where there's just no sound effects at all, or if they do have sound effects, they're awful. And there's no voice acting here in this game either, when I was, at, when I was actually expecting it here. But mostly the sound effects are either absent, misplaced, or they sound awful. I mean, here's an example of one. I was running from the beach and I was in the water, but as I ran out of the beach and now I was in the middle of the town on cobblestone streets, my feet were still making the sounds of splashing through water. See what I mean? Next up is the tutorial. It's just awful. Don't get me wrong, it's a nice attempt and I'm glad they've got something here, but the problem with the tutorial is that it's too much and yet too little at the same time. We don't need specific details, just tell us the brief description of what we need to do and what we're doing here so we can figure it- I mean, we can figure out the rest. But like, show me what button to click, not tell me, and then leave it up to me to fi find that button. Because your user interface can be a bit confusing when you first get into the game. So I was just clicking around randomly trying to figure out what button the tutorial wanted me to push because it didn't give me enough specifics. It gave me plenty of specifics about what I was actually doing. I don't need to have three paragraphs about what I'm doing, maybe about how to do what I'm doing, but I know what I'm doing, I'm trying to craft something. Oh, look at that, a few words. Now, tell me what button to click. Also, the tutorial only pops up in certain areas or when you first do something. I hate these kinds of tutorials. I would much rather the tutorial guided me along, forcing me to do one thing, then the next, thus teaching me how to play, all while being parallel to the story. And there are people out there who hate those tutorials, so have a button that lets you turn it off if, if you don't want to do that. But at least this way it teaches me what I need to know to progress, but here? Here, I spent an hour running around doing nothing because I had no idea what the game wanted me to do next. I had no idea where to go or what I was supposed to be doing. Since the tutorial only popped up once you reached a certain something or location that I never found, I have no idea what to do next. So I'm lost. I still don't know what I'm supposed to be doing in the game. Awful tutorial. The next negative is just the overall direction and story here. I mean, it's kind of a lame excuse why she's stuck on the island. It's very... Very boring, bland, and, and not full of creativity at all. I mean, why did her crashing on this island have to be an accident in the first place? I mean, in the story, you confirmed that she was traveling to find a place to settle down where she could complete her apprenticeship. So why couldn't it have just been here, since there's no witch available here to help people? Why did it have to be an accident at all? Now I just feel like I'm here against my will, and I don't really want to help the people keeping me hostage. Why did they just randomly give me a house instead of a room somewhere, and then I work my way up to the house because I'm trustworthy? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. And I could keep going with the nonsensical nature of this plotline story and direction, but I'd be here all day if I do that. It needs some work and redirection is what I'm saying. Next is the direction itself, the flow of the game, the purpose of the game. It's all wrong. I mean, I have absolutely no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. I found my broomstick, but now I gotta take it to someone. Who? I don't know. Apparently I haven't found them yet, and the game never directed me to them or told me anything about them. Yet I'm supposed to go take my broomstick to her for something. And with the town being completely abandoned and empty, I mean, look at this. So, how am I supposed to find one person in all this? And that doesn't even get me anywhere since she's not allowed to leave via a curse, so why do I even- Why do I want the damn thing? Why do I want the stupid broomstick? But when it comes to trying to settle down and start working, I run out of stamina way too fast. I have enough to chop one and a half logs before I have to sleep. It takes me an hour of in-game time, then sleep for 24 hours to do it again. It says you can use mushrooms to make soup to heal your stamina, but guess what? After you pick the mushrooms in your home, you're out! There are no more to be found on the island, and boy did I search everywhere, so no soup for me, I guess. The game kinda directs me to start crafting things to sell to villagers, and okay, fine. I know an amulet and a potion recipe, so that's fine. The problem? They want ingredients that the game has not told me how to get. Not even a tutorial, I mean nothing. I searched forever to find a tibia, to find a roach fish, to find feathers or soft wood, but couldn't find them anywhere. Can't attack animals. Can't get close enough to birds. So, I have no idea how to progress further. It seems that the direction of the gameplay is completely discombobulated, and I doubt anyone be, would be able to figure this out easily. I tried following the main quest, and I tried exploring, so I'm clearly missing something, but that's not my fault, it's the game's fault for not giving me that something. And last but not least, the game is just empty. 
I know it's early access, so it's going to be missing a lot of stuff, so this isn't a big deal, but I mean, at least make sure the first two hours of your game are filled with magic, wonder, and merriment. Otherwise, people are going to get irritated, annoyed, and bored in their first two hours, like I did, and end up requesting a refund, and you'll end up getting negative rev reviews, and people just won't support your game. Okay, look, one more thing to talk about. It's not good or bad, but it's the stability, and it's kind of in the middle because for the most part it was fine, but I was facing constant freezing and frame rate drops, not even when it was raining, just as I was running around in normal weather. So game devs need to keep an eye on that and hope that these don't turn into game crashes. Okay, so that's all I got for the negatives. Honestly, the game, it's okay, I guess. I mean, it's really empty, it's got no direction, and it's too open-ended. I mean, even Porsche wasn't this open-ended when it first released in early access. We need more direction to help us learn our way around. We need more boundaries in the beginning as we figure things out and learn the gameplay. It, it just can't be this vague and free or else we will lose interest very quickly as we're lost for something to do. I think the game has some serious potential though. I think this game could end up being something super cool. Although maybe let players choose to be a male witch or a female witch. If you don't want customization, fine, don't give us customization. Just give us two different models, male and female, Abel and Adam. I think it would broaden your horizons some. But yeah, it has a solid foundation and they clearly need some more feedback from fans because the game still needs a lot of tweaking. And if they listen, make some adjustments, I think this game could end up being a really good open world farming simulator with lots of really cool, beautiful magic. I mean, I can see the potential, I, I can see the good that's hiding between the early access garbage. It just needs more work. As for me, I'm not too sure I'm into this. It's just way too early access for my liking and I probably won't pick it up again for another year or two. But if you're desperate for a new farming sim game and you want to support this team, then feel free to do so. But if you're on the fence and not sure if you want to take the risk, then let me tell you it's better off to put it on your wish list and wait. I just don't think it's worth your time and money at this point in time. Wait a while first. Alright everybody? Okay, so that's all the time I got for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure, and until then, I bid you all farewell.